Hello, welcome to this Next Substance Designer Tip and Trick video. Uh, in this video we're going to use uh, one of the substance assets uh, as a model and I'm just going to show you where to find that. So over on the uh, left hand side here we have a little button uh, which is the substance assets and I can click on that and it will open in the Creative Cloud and take me there. Forgive me if you don't have the subscription, if you've got the Steam version or something like that that doesn't come with this. Uh, but if you've got the subscription um, model, you know, this will be available to you. Uh, now, sadly, the models aren't at this stage. We need to open up a browser for that. Uh, so down here we have Substance 3D Assets. And I can click there and it will open up in my browser and log me on. Um, and then we get a selection of collections and things that we can have a look at. Um, but under one of them, is weapons still here? They've probably moved it by now. Production design sports where no, they've moved it. Uh, we can go to my assets, um, in which case the helmet's there because I've downloaded it. Uh, collections or all assets. So in collections, uh, we should have weapons somewhere, uh, but I'm just gonna just collapse these down to, to find models, and then we have weapons. And then we have all sorts of things you can practice on, which is terrific because you know you've got some really nice models that you can practice your techniques on. Um, and down the bottom, we've got a selection of helmets, and I've just picked out the the Viking one because uh, I think it looks cool. Okay, so download that, and when you get into Substance Painter, uh, it's just File New. Uh, I'm going to work at 2048. I'll go to select pick your uh, helmet uh, underscore viking dot fbx and that's about it I've got DirectX selected there uh, I don't need it to unwrap or anything so all that's good so I'll click OK I'll discard my project here okay so in the next stage uh, I'm just going to show you how to use one of your baked maps um, directly without using it through a filter through a generator or a filter or something um, so we need to generate the maps and then I'll show you how to use one so I'll talk to you then okay so let's bake the maps out uh, so if I go to the texture set settings and bake mesh maps um, I deselect ID. I set my ambient occlusion uh, to 256 and 0.005 and my curvature to 256 and 0.005. They're my kind of starting points. Uh, so once you've done that, hit bake selected and it will go off and do its thing. Come on, you can do it quicker than that. No, apparently it can't. Um, so once this is done we can access the maps themselves so as you can see we've got our maps here and I'm largely interested in the frame maps but what I want to do is include those in my layer stack and to do that I need to uh, first of all I'm going to add a fill layer and for this particular one I'm only going to use the height channel but over in my libraries I'm going to switch over from all libraries to this project and then go to textures and that then shows me my bank textures so I can use these as if they were an image as if they were an image I'd imported or you know created in here so for this one I'm going to use curvature because curvature is going to highlight the edges of my model and I'm going to drag and drop it into the height channel and you'll see it then accentuates all those pieces all those bits where the height is uh, is you know attaching and you know that forms quite a nice um, effect not necessarily you know for all of the uh, the helmet it might not be suitable for that but certainly down here and on these kind of uh, cross piece wings I quite like it uh, but we we're not limited to just doing it like that we could add a filter to this um, in fact I'm going to change my mind and I'm going to add a black mask to this and then I'll add a fill layer and then I'll just put it in there 
and then I've got a little bit more control. So now if I increase my height so I can you know use my slider rather than having to control it with a, like a levels or something like that. Okay so let's increase that a bit. So now I've got some more detail in this it's not you know as flat as it was if I turn this off you see that's what it looked like it's a nice model it's got some nice bits in it uh, but using that curvature map is giving it some extra oomph so what we'll do in the next one is I'll start to add some actual materials into this and then um, you know we'll use our um, curvature map to help us you know texture this nicely so I'll talk to you in the next bit okay so this is my height layer and I want to add some color onto it so I'm going to add a new layer above that and then change my project or libraries from uh, project to all libraries and then I'm going to find my steel uh, steel rough is what I want I think uh, there we go so we'll add that in and I'm going to instance this across the other ones so that the rivets all match in there we go okay so first of all I want to do something about these edges I want there to be a darkness in those cavities and such like so in this layer um, I'm going to leave it as it is for the moment because <laughs> I missed made a mistake uh, I'm going to add a new layer and add steel rough to it and this time I'm going to reduce the uh, color so it's darker and I'm also when I get there going to increase the roughness uh, so I don't need height I don't need normal I don't need metal um, but I do need roughness oh I do need metal sorry that's my brain not working properly okay so in the roughness, uh, steel roughness slider, I'm going to really increase that so that these dark bits are going to end up more matte than the actual helmet itself. So we need to add a black mask to this. And now I can right click, sorry, right click on the black mask on the bottom layer and add an anchor point. So you can name this, uh, I'll call it AP Height. AP height mask is fine but AP height is good and then up here I'm going to right click and uh, we'll add a generator and in that generator I'm going to add uh, dirt and that will add a dirt uh, map to us and it's added it in and we can see it's had an effect but it's not as strong as I want it to be so in this dirt I'm going to click on the micro height at the bottom, go to anchor points and select, uh, select my AP height. And then just a little further up, I've got micro details and I can activate micro height. And that immediately has an effect. And it's a bit more visible if I go and ha just have a look at the mask here. So if I turn that off, that's what it looks like. So that's it without the height information being uh, plugged into that dirt generator. If I uh, add it in then we've got our extra um, extra areas and we can control these a little bit by changing our curvature intensity or our height density uh, nothing actually seems to be changing and that's because uh, no it's, it's just the way it is uh, so I can adjust my AO radius sometimes here these um, sliders don't do anything it doesn't mean it's not working it just means there's no real height information or curvature information for it to work with uh, but we do have AO and I can increase and decrease that I'm going to decrease it a bit and we can even increase the depth the depth unfortunately is picking up the mesh underneath so I'm going to drop that down a little bit okay let's go back to our material now I'm just going to adjust this material so it's a little bit more uh, visible so I'm going to grab my steel color and I'm going to bring that down 
till I get a nice strong kind of uh, dirt uh, layer in there. There we go. Okay, so that's pretty nice. I'm quite happy with that. Um, so next what we'll do is um, add in some painted information here um, so that we can put some uh, painted designs in and have it picking up on the dirt layer and integrating into the into the texture. So I'll talk to you then. Okay, so this bit's ever so easy. Uh, all we need to do is go to our fill layer on our black mask and add a paint layer. And then if I close this and pick a brush, I'm going to pick a hard brush. And then I'm going to go to my alphas and I'm going to pick one of the Celtic -y designs that they've got here. Uh, so we've got the kind of these flowers and things. I'm going to pick this one and I'm just going to increase the size of my brush until it's about the right size. There we go. Now, um, for this bit, I want to work out the spacing. So when I brush, it's just spacing over itself at the moment. Uh, so I just want to work out uh, how far this needs to be for me to get one after the other. And I think it's probably going to be somewhere about there, judging by this. So if I do that, oh no, that's way too, way too high. Let's take that back a bit. There we go, that's nearly there, perhaps a little bit more space. Okay, now that I've got that right, I can go around the back, or even better because this is a massively curved surface, uh, I can switch to my, um, not orthographic view, on my 2D view, and I happen to know that this is that area. So if I just zoom in a bit, now I need to see the whole thing. This is uh, <laughs> this is where I need to uh, have as much screen space as possible. There we go. So from somewhere around there, if I now press the uh, space bar and then go over to the other side, it will draw it in a straight line for me. And as you can see, it's drawn us a nice straight line right across there, right to the other end. You could, I could increase the spacing just a teeny weeny bit more there, but I think we'll be okay. Okay, now it's not including into the dirt mask at the moment. You'll notice that, and that's because the anchor point is below it. And if I drag it above, you'll see now that it integrates that into the material. So let's go back to our uh, 3D view. There we go, and now we have a nice little Celtic design all around the uh, the brim of the hat. Brim? Is that the right word? Rim? Hoop? Something like that. Okay, so slightly less sophisticated. I can do the same down this piece here. Uh, so I'm going to pick a, a rounded one here. Something's not right. What's not right? I oh, don't appear to be on a paintable layer. There we go. I was just on the wrong layer. So I'm going to scale that down, pick my circle again, and I'm just going to go down and add those in. Now this one uh, is going a bit too mad, and that would mean that I just need to adjust my uh, settings here, because it's not going to, you know, that doesn't look very nice. So I could reduce the radius a bit. It's going to have an effect over the whole helmet, and I could reduce my depth a bit. So, you know, it's a bit of a, uh, I don't know, not guessing game, but a little bit of a compromise. So perhaps I won't do that at all, actually. Let's just undo and get rid of those. Let's see if I can find another brush that will give me a better effect. Let's try this one. Whoops, I'm on the wrong layer again, aren't I? There we go. So let's paint that in there. No, that's doing the same. Uh, let's try a diamond. Yeah, I mean that's a bit better. At least it's, uh, you know, showing, you know, the uh, the metal from the diamond there. So for this one I'm just going to hand do it because I have no way of drawing a straight line here. 
there we go okay so uh, that's essentially what I wanted to show you uh, I wanted to show you that you know you can bring in a, a one of your baked maps and you can actually use it to texture directly without having to um, <coughs> excuse me uh, without having to go through a generator um, so that's about it for this one uh, I'm probably going to continue a bit more to finish this off but I'll include that in the next section which I'll do just to speed it up video so you can see the end result you have to excuse me I'm about to uh, <laughs> I'm about to have a coughing fit uh, so I will talk to you again soon